Barnaby Jones, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Buddy Epson. Also starring Lee Merriweather. Mark Shera. With guest stars Robert Reed, Catherine Justice, Anthony Gary, Anne Lockhart. Tonight's episode, Death Beat. This guy wants to go on a camera, that's why he called us. Jim? Get back! Hey, man, okay. This is DeWitt Robinson on the Vincent Thomas Bridge in San Pedro. The man you see on that ledge is Jim Anders. Called us on the KBX hotline. Told us his intentions. Seemed to be reaching out. Like he wanted somebody to stop him. Jim? Jim, we want to help you. I don't know what a reporter can say to you. Nobody asked you to say anything. You want us to listen, is that it? Yeah, why not? Nobody else will. What's the problem? You have trouble at home? Your wife, girlfriend, lose your job? Are you hooked on something? Let me speak to him. Father Moore. What's your name? What's his name? Anders, Jim Anders. Jim, will you give me just a minute? Look, whatever you're selling, I am not buying it. There's an answer, Jim. There's always an answer, no matter what's bugging you. There's got to be a better way than this. Come on, talk to me. Hey, Jim, as lousy as it is, there's always something worth talking about. There's got to be somebody who's going to miss you. How about it? You married? Isn't there a girl somewhere? Mother? Father? Who is it, Jim? Who do you care about? Get him away from me! Take my hand, Jim. I promise you, there's an answer, one you can buy. <laughs> One more beat. Now. I wonder what we had to do with this. I mean, if we hadn't have been there, maybe it wouldn't have happened. So if we don't cover the news, somebody else will. Nobody asked that priest to interfere. Tell me something, it. If you stay in this business long enough, do you ever get used to it? Maybe you have to. What's the running time on that? 3.57. Robinson's reports, cutting room. Yeah, he's here. Do it. It's the hotline. They're putting it through. Let me take that timing sheet up to the control room, will you? Yeah, DeWitt Robinson. It's me, Jim. Uh, hold on. Hey, Steve, is there any coffee around here? Sure. Newsroom, huh? Stuff tastes like it was made by Dr. Jekyll. Right. And it'll do wonders for you. You made it, you all right? How can I be all right? We just killed a man, a priest. Are you sure? Did you see a body? I didn't have to see him. Why didn't you stop him? How was I gonna do that? Hey, Father, don't worry about the guy on the bridge. There's a little manufactured news for the six o'clock report. Well, that would have been a lot better than what happened. It was an accident. Do it. You can't run that film. I've gotta run it. 
everybody knows I've got it, why wouldn't I run it? I'll be recognized. Sure, you'll be recognized. You knew that beforehand. That's why you can't go home. You find yourself someplace to crash at the marina. You shave your lip, and I'll see you at the foot of the South Jetty at 9 in the morning. You damn well better see me now. Look, I've got a newscast to do. I've got a press club dinner tonight that I cannot get out of. Now, don't sweat it. I'll take care of everything. Can you take care of the priest? Hey, I mean, maybe he's all right. You made it, maybe he did too. Jim, trust me. Okay? I'll see you in the morning. Mr. Jones, come in. Thank you. Did you see the police yet? My associate is down there now. I hope they tell him more than they told me. They haven't recovered anyone from the water yet. But it's been 15 hours, and Jim hasn't been at his apartment since I got into town. I've knocked on his door so many times, the landlady's daughter thinks I'm some kind of a nut. Oh, Mr. Jones, I'm a nervous wreck. Maybe we better get right over to the TV station. The uh, screen in the projection room is a lot bigger than a television set. You can probably tell for sure whether it was your friend that jumped off the bridge. I just can't believe he'd do it, Mr. Jones. Especially not after he wrote me about how well he was doing out here. How did he send the letter? All my love. Well, now, any fellow that signs a letter that way isn't thinking about jumping off any bridges. OK, I guess you're right. <laughs> oh, we might find out something. Hi. Oh, uh, this is my associate, Jedediah Jones. And I have to warn you, at the very first opportunity, he'll ask you to call him JR. Hi, I'm Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How are you? They found uh, Father Moore's body outside the harbor entrance, but there's no sign of the other guy, Jim Anders. Jim Wills. I tried to tell the police that. Well, they're just going by what uh, he was called on television. When he called in on the hotline, he used the name Anders. Now, the question is, why would anyone contemplating suicide bother to lie about his name? That's right. He wouldn't, would he? Confess to the police, you out of your gourd? That's not gonna bring the priest back. It'll get him off my head. Sure. You're gonna mess up two other lives, man, yours and mine. How do you ignore something that you see every time you close your eyes? Hey, give it a little time. It'll go away. You'll forget about it. Look, I owed you 500. Here's another 500 on top of that. Okay, it's not gonna make you forget, not right away. But a grant's gonna go a long way to getting you back to Columbus, back to, what's her name, Wendy, huh? Wouldn't she rather have you free in Columbus than here in the Slammer? She's not in Columbus. Wherever? She's here. Look, I called back home last night. I had to talk to somebody, and you weren't available. They said she flew out here. She wanted to surprise me. Oh, that's some surprise. Well, she probably went to my place when I didn't show up. Well, there's no telling where she is now. The worst that happens is, she flies back to Ohio. Not if she saw me on the news last night. What if she thinks I'm dead? OK. OK. I'll find her. Come on, I can do that. I got contacts on the hotline. Only you just keep your problem to yourself. Here, come on. All right. Find her. You going to cool it? Here's where I'm flopping in Venice, under the name Wilson. Wait a minute. You are gonna cool it? If you don't take too long. I don't know what a reporter can say to you. Nobody asked you to say anything. 
You want us to listen? Is that it? Yeah! Why not? Nobody else will. What's the problem? You, you have trouble at home? Your wife? Or your girlfriend? Oh, my God. You lose your job? You're absolutely certain that's Jim. Are you hooked on something? Let me see yes, you. it's Jim. Mustache must be new. Father Moore. I could tell it was him just by hearing his voice. What's your name? That's all we need, thanks. Jim Anders. That'll do it, Fred, thanks. None of this makes any sense to me at all. Look. You see, read the part where it says he's been getting some work. Apparently, he figured uh, it might lead to some acting jobs on television. Pictures, maybe. Well, it certainly didn't sound like a guy with no future and no hope. No, it certainly doesn't. Thank you, Miss Price. Listen, there's something else that I think you ought to know about. Jim was on the diving team when he was in college. Oh? High board or low board? Tower. He used to even pretend like he was doing a comedy act, you know? He'd pretend like he was falling, and then right at the last minute, he'd cut the water just like a knife. Then you think the idea of his selecting a high bridge to end it all just doesn't track? That's exactly what I'm thinking. Steve, grab a camera and meet me in the parking lot, quick. I'll explain. Girlfriend and detective. But we can catch them before they leave the parking lot. Hold it, Libby, not so fast. Why? Do it. Just think. A grief-stricken girlfriend, a dead priest, a fake name. That's the kind of story the network will pick up on. What fake name? Anders. The girl ID'd him as Jim Wills. And it gets better. She won't believe that he's dead. He was a high diver in college. <laughs> Is this a ticket to the big time or what? Do it. Yeah, you go get him, Libby. I'll be there in two minutes. First off, I think you ought to take a ride over to Jim's apartment. Hopefully, he had some nosy neighbors who might be able to... Mr. Jones! Mr. Jones! Oh, I'm so glad we caught you. Miss Milliken, we'd like very much to interview you for tonight's broadcast. Me? It's all about Jim who he really is, how you came out here to be with him, and all about... Lisa, I really don't think... I that... think an interview at this time is a little premature. Okay, let me... <clears throat> Got it. <clears throat> this is Wendy Milligan, who came here from Columbus, Ohio, to be with a man named Jim Wills. Miss Milligan, you saw our news broadcast last night, and you recognized the man on that bridge as your fiancé? Um, yes. No, I mean, no. Look, I wasn't sure. Excuse me, Mr. Robinson, but Miss Milliken's been through an ordeal. I don't think you want to add to her grief, do you? Who are you, sir? Barnaby Jones, private investigator, hired by Miss Milliken to find her fiancé. Mr. Jones, what's happening here is news. I don't want to interfere with your First Amendment right to gather news, Mr. Robinson, but there is no news here yet. But of course there is. Miss Milliken, I understand you refuse to believe that Jim's suicide attempt was successful. Look, it wasn't a suicide. He wouldn't do that. Look, no interview. Isn't that what you were just told? He was a high driver, wasn't he? I don't think I'm explaining this clear enough. You see, the young lady is worried about someone she loves and doesn't need a microphone stuck in her face. OK, Steve, that ought to give us enough for broadcast. That's just about all you care about, isn't it? Hey, Libby, you're on the ball, kid. This one ought to give us enough to milk for days. We play our cards, right? Oh, I mean, do you remember Cloris LaRue? You mean the stripper with the snakes? Or what I read in the newspaper. She used to live here. How do you know? I dated an actress here once. Singers, actors, dancers, OK. But snakes, no way. So you mean you just kicked Cloris out? Not me. My mother, the manager. When's the last time you saw Jim? I haven't seen him since yesterday morning. But so what? I've stood up before. You had a date with him? Last night. He was supposed to take me to Le Chevalier. Fancy schmancy. That's 70 bucks a throw, isn't it? It was to thank me, he said. 
I toss him a little salad spaghetti when he has the shorts, you know. He's so grateful. Struggling young actor, lands part in pictures, is that it? He's more into stunts, I think. He's very athletic. When did he give up acting? When his acting teacher recommended it. You know who that teacher was? Let's see, Archer, Archette, Arche, silent T. French. A R C H E T, Arche. All right, I'll get right on it. Uh, Barnaby, are you planning to go into the uh, theater? I will if it's necessary to find out about Jim Wills. Oh, uh, Barnaby, Wendy called. It seems DeWitt Robinson phoned her, wanted to finish out that interview. She tried to say no, but... How long ago was that? Just a few minutes. Listen, I'd really like to know how he found out where she was. He impresses me as the kind of a fellow who would find a potato bug in a bean barrel if he thought there was a story in it. I think Wendy needs us. Wendy, what about the letter he sent you? Oh, he said he had some work. Why do you think he told us the exact opposite? I don't know. What kind of work? He didn't say. Wendy, if he did survive, as you believe, why do you think he hasn't come forward? Well, maybe he's hurt or, or dazed or something. Or hiding. Why would he do that? Afraid, maybe. Thinking he was responsible for the death of Father Moore. But the priest grabbed him. How could that be Jim's fault? That would depend on exactly why he was threatening to jump in the first place. You insist that he wasn't suicidal. Why then? Was it a publicity stunt? Well, uh, Barnaby? This would be Barnaby Jones again, private investigator. Are these folks invited guests? No. Then why don't we invite them out? She opened the door for us. It's still open. Why don't you use it? What kind of camera is this anyway? This is a zoom lens, right? Come on, these man. Really difficult. All right, Steve, Libby, that's it. Well, off the record, do you think he's still alive? Off the record, no, but we're going to find out. If you do, will you give me an exclusive? Well, I've got one. How about an overly ambitious news hog who gets a trespassing rap laid on him if he ever pulls a stunt like this again? Mr. Milliken, you refuse to believe that Jim's suicide attempt was successful, is that right? Look, it wasn't a suicide. He wouldn't do that. No interview. Isn't that what you were just told? No interview. All right, interview. cut it there. Take him out completely in Jones, too. And that new stuff, when it comes back from the lab, cut around both of them. It's super footage, DeWitt. Too good for the locals. Hey, wouldn't it be a trip if he was alive? He sees his girl on TV all choked up over him. Phew, that sure smoke him out of the woodwork. Yeah, you're not kidding. Well, you go ahead and make the cuts. Be right back. I hope he does it. Sees the broadcast, turns himself in. You think he'd get a year or two? Cause, I mean, that Wendy's a nice girl. And you're aromatic. you been locating your girlfriend as promised you found Wendy I will have by six o'clock tonight six tonight six thirty at the latest it's a sure thing okay just call me right away yeah but you're gonna have to answer the phone a lot quicker than you did this time where were you oh I I'm, I'm on the third floor the only phone is in the lobby it'll probably be while we're on the air with the news I can only be on the phone for a few seconds at a time so I'll, I'll stand by the phone well look between six and six thirty don't get impatient. You stay in the lobby and close to the phone, okay? Right. Now, you students certainly know what a rose is. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Listen, darling, please. Now, try to think of yourself as a beautiful, pink, fully opened blossom. Not a bloomin' ragweed. Oh, well, I'm sorry, darling. Perhaps we should think of some other little flower. How about a nice, bright little yellow daisy? Would you like that? Marvelous. Over there, darling. Mr. Archer? 
Well, well, my dear sir, I'm not often privileged to hear my name properly pronounced. As a mark of my appreciation, I'm waiving the usual charge of admission. Thank you. We appreciate that. My name is Barnaby Jones. This is my associate, Jedediah Jones. Jedediah. Well, it's certainly a pleasure to meet you. And I can certainly use a young man of your talent, Jedediah. It's rather hard to keep young leading men, you know. Like Jim Will. I'd like to ask you a few questions about him. Hmm. Private investigator, eh? Well, I'll tell you anything except that he was a good actor. Is that why you advised him to go into stunt work? Oh, come now, Mr. Uh, Jones. It seems to me you've already done some investigation. Some? Well, Jim is very physical, of course, but you don't just go into stunt work. You mean jobs like that are hard to find? Well, he mentioned recently someone who was very good at opening doors. Any idea who that may have been? I had the impression it was a television person, someone of rather substantial influence. No, no, darling, a bright little yellow daisy. Excuse me, sir. She's the girlfriend of one of my backers. Now, darling, it's simply a matter of concentration. Now, Barnaby, what television person named DeWitt Robinson do we know in this case? Maybe we just don't know him well enough. Ah, shucks. Just when I was beginning to like not seeing him. But the other day, sometimes you have to wade through the hog wallow to get to the melon. Well, I'll put on my high boots. Hello. Yeah. Hotel Brody, room 843, 9 o'clock tonight. Got it. 843, 9 o'clock. I'll be there. Where's Wendy? She's not here. You promised me that she'd be here. Oh, that's before I found out Wendy hired a private detective to find you, man. I should have known better. It's a temporary delay. It's temporary. And I'm telling you, that private detective is digging in pretty good. You've got to get your story straight. My story? All right, all right. We're both on the hook. Here. Take a look at that. That's $4,000. I want you to play one last scene in front of my camera. What kind of scene? I want you to play the same scene you were supposed to play before. Only this time you tell him it was a performance on that bridge, see? Father Moore believed it. All right, now you've got such a case of the guilts. This time, you're gonna do it for real. Without any water to land in. Just tell me where Wendy is, man. Well, look, this time I talk you out of it. I'll find her myself. Sorry, but look, they'll understand. All you're gonna get is probation. Get out of my way! It's too late! It was all on the air. Everything tonight. What was on the air? Your real name, interviews with Wendy, everything. Except the deal with me. Now look, Jim, it's all set up. We can do it this time. No. Get out of my way! I don't... I want to find... Oh! Five six two one nine. Libby Price. Libby, I just heard from Jim Wills. He's at the Hotel Brody in the Roof Garden. Says he's going to try it again. Yeah. Number one in the news market. That's where DeWitt Robinson's hotline put us. Sorry, it's the only chance I'll get. I'm sure you fellas won't join me. No, thank you. Mr. Monahan, how long has the hotline been in existence? Oh, let's see, at least five, maybe six months since DeWitt talked us into it. Fifty bucks cash for any news tip we use on the air. A regular viewer would know that. Guess you found me out. <laughs> that made him into kind of a hero, didn't it? Saved his job for him. And may get him a spot on a national show out of New York. 
Mr. Robinson's uh, story's all been on the sensational side, haven't they? Yes, they have been lately, starting with the terrorists who blew up the abandoned power facility. Oh, yeah, I remember that about a month and a half ago, right? The hotline didn't pay off during the first few months, did it? Right. Caught on just before option time. Mr. Monahan, I wonder if you could supply us with a list of the stories that Mr. Robinson's hotline generated, along with the dates. Well, I think I'd have to know why, Mr. Jones. Kind of like to see how they stack up against the activities of the young man who went off the roof garden last night. Jim Wills? You know what you're suggesting, manufactured news. That's a very serious accusation. That's why we have to be sure before we make it. Kind of figured that uh, you'd want to know one way or the other, too. I'm very grateful to you, Betty. I really needed somebody, and you were there. Thank you. Listen, if you'd like me to stick around for a while, I'd be more than happy to. It's OK, thanks anyway, but... I'm really whipped. Well, you have my number. Yeah. Oh, Betty, why did this happen? I just don't understand any of this. I've got a whole life to replan, you know? And I just can't seem to do any of it until I find out what, what it was that happened. Wendy, I'll make you this promise. Barnaby will never stop until all of this is explained. Okay. It's going to be fine. Wendy, Jim asked me to talk to you. Jim? Jim Wills was obviously very disturbed on that roof. He asked me to tell Wendy how desperately sorry he was. But he kept saying, if it hadn't been a priest, if it hadn't been a priest, was Jim a religious man? Uh, he respected life. Yes, he respected life. That's why Jim Wills was so tortured a man. And that's why he didn't commit suicide. He did not commit suicide. Do you hear me? He didn't have it in him. I don't care what you say, he didn't. I was there. I tried to stop Jim Wills oh, on that roof. I can hear you trying to stop him. Don't jump, Jim. Don't jump. Not until you've told us your whole sad story. Oh, and turn your head this way a little bit so we can get your good side on the camera. We can all understand. Well, why don't you just get out of here? Why don't you put that one on the air, huh, Robinson? Kill it. Libby, I dropped by your station to see you. They said you were here. Right. I thought you came here to rescue me. Well, I did, but you didn't look like you needed it. Did you see the anchor man? Monahan, yeah, I think we're on the right track. And I blew my little intimate interview with Libby the way I just came in here just now. Oh, I kind of liked it myself. Did you forget something? To apologize. Sometimes DeWitt gets carried away. I'm really sorry for everything. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Jones, I thought you'd be finished asking questions about Jim. Now that he's, I mean, now that he's not missing anymore. I'm going to keep asking questions, Margie, until they're all answered, especially about his work. His stunt jobs? I not only want to know the nature of the job, but, uh, when he did it. Now, I compiled a list here in hopes that it'll jog your memory. Explosion, fire, robbery. Such dangerous work. It makes you wonder why. Did he ever mention anything about a fire about the third of last month? My memory. Can I tell you about my memory? The worst. Lucky we don't have to rely on it. I keep a journal. A diary? No, a journal. You know, my thoughts, feelings, character sketches. Whenever I meet somebody interesting, you're in it. You want to be a writer, is that it? John Boy started with a journal, didn't he? 
Here's what I have for the third. The third wasn't exactly what you call one of your banner days. Shall we move along to the fourth? Uh, oh. Jim knocked on the door. It was two in the morning. He asked if there was any salve in the house. There was a burn on his hand. Will Wendy be heading back to Ohio right away, do you think? I don't know. She didn't say. Were you ever around when Robinson took one of his hotline calls? Not lately. Do you think she'll talk to me? I mean, woman to woman. Hmm. Wendy. <laughs> Say, who's the reporter around here anyway? You keep answering my questions with questions. Why are you so interested in DeWitt? Uh, it's my week for collecting jerks. Is that what you want me to say? That he's a jerk? All right, he's a jerk. Present company accepted, I hope. <laughs> Mr. Jones. Sorry, but I have to borrow your friend. Something came up on the Wills case. I have a job for you. Is that urgent? I think so. What can I say? Yeah, we both have a lot in common. We're both slaves to our work. Mm hmm. Straight. Now, you see, your name is Marjorie Hall, and you're a neighbor of Jim Wilt. Oh, I see. You're the landlady's daughter. She left you a letter? Confession? Confession to what? What happened on the bridge? I see. Well, yes, I'd like very much to look at the letter. I figured there'd be a price. What kind of money are you talking about? Hmm? I don't know. How's about a million bucks? Uh, that's uh, pretty steep. Uh, take me a little while to raise that kind of money. No kidding. You could have fooled me. Well, I'll try. Uh, but in the meantime, don't sell the letter to anyone else. Just to, to tie him down, to lock him in his office, anything. I've got to see him. Hey, Bobby, who's got more money than the network, huh? That's right, nobody. <laughs> yeah, so squeeze him a little. Yeah, but don't blow the deal, okay? Yeah, right. Do it. Oh, I'm glad I caught you. Hey, Libby, just in time, grab a glass and I'll give you one guess. Weird. New York's come through with an offer. <laughs> My agent's negotiating the deal. Cheers, babe. Yeah. Johnny said you had something hot. What is it? Yep. Jim Wills left a letter. It's a confession of some sort about what happened on the bridge. Left it, left it where? With his landlady's daughter, a Margie Hall. I don't know what it's about, DeWitt, but it sounded pretty important. And it has to be something that you can use tonight when you wrap that story. Uh, yeah. Oh, Did the right thing, babe. Really on the ball. Huh. Yeah. I'll handle it, okay? Well, don't you want to know how I found out? Oh. 
Georgie Hall? You win first prize. Who wants to know? To Whit Robinson. Well, <laughs> been reading an awful lot about you lately. Well, if you're talking about the letter, let's get at it. Letter? What letter? If you don't know, baby, forget hey. about it. Come on. Word do get around on it. Are you making an offer? I might be interested. Could be worth a lot. Depends on what's in it. Judge for yourself. That's a copy, of course. I made it down in my local friendly neighborhood drugstore. Girl can't be too careful in matters like this, huh? Did he spell your name right, honey? Man was in the wrong business. He should have been a comedy writer. What are you saying? This is a fiction? Oh, yeah. Of the bad pulp variety. Yeah, I don't know. It looked like a confession to me. I mean, at this late date, uh, why should the guy lie, huh? I figure the police are gonna think that. A man in my position is always vulnerable to this kind of slander. And I find it less damaging in the long run to pay off than to fight back. You understand that? Seems like a reasonable attitude. Yes. And how much is reasonable? And how fast do you think you want it? Barnaby. He went for the bait. Betty did okay? Yeah, even though Marge wasn't crazy about the impersonation, she got the job done. Where is the payoff going to be? By the monkey cages at the old zoo. Yeah, I think I know where that is. What time? This afternoon, 4 o'clock. All right. Will you get things going? Okay, good enough. Talk to you later. Goodbye. Rotten business, isn't it? Yours or mine? Both. You set me up, and I set him up. It's just that I, I could have stopped him, but I didn't. And you shouldn't have. Libby, look. The fraud that Robinson perpetrated on the public is nothing compared to the crime he committed against the name of every TV newsman in the business, including you. I mean, he's responsible for the death of Father Moore, if not Jim Wells. How did you know that I wasn't in on it? Well, you would have been at Margie's place waiting for him. If you thought you had equal billing in that letter. Come on, we better go. We? Well, you don't want another station to get a scoop on your own story, do you? You're a reporter, aren't you? Yes, uh -huh. I am. And that's the final Robinson report on the short life and tragic death of Jim Wills. In fact, the final Robinson report you'll be seeing locally on this station. Beginning Monday, we'll be seen a half an hour later on the network news originating from New York. This is DeWitt Robinson, and that's a wrap. I want to thank you, Charlie, for letting me tape in advance. I'll stick around and do that live, never made a play. No problem, DeWitt. I'm, uh, I'm just sorry this will be your last show here. We're going to miss Robinson's report, not to mention the ratings on our 6 o'clock news. Yeah, well, you'll come up with something. Well, good luck in New York, DeWitt. Thanks, Charlie.
I watch a lot of television. Come on, let's get it over with. And I want the original. So do I. If you get my meaning. All right. That's it. We're through. You understand that, Miss Hall. Finished. Yes, I do believe that is the word for it, Mr. Robinson. Finished. Drop it! Don't try it, Robinson. Don't try it, Robinson. Drop it! Under arrest, Robinson. Suspicion of murder. By exchanging the money for what he believed to be an incriminating letter, TV news personality DeWitt Robinson has verified his part in the planning and execution of fraudulent stories. You're still on the ball, aren't you, Levy? Oh, I taught you pretty good, huh? You were wrong about one thing. I don't think I'll ever get used to it. Oh, sure. For old time's sake. Lieutenant. All right. What am I going to say? You want me to tell you that the news at 6 o'clock isn't real? Oh, hell, it's real enough. We just dramatized it a little for you, that's all. That's all. We don't want you to tune us off. We edit, we select, we go out on a bridge when somebody's gonna jump, because you want to see it. Nobody wanted that priest to die. Jim Wills agonized over it more than I did. That's why we... That's why we were dancing around on the roof garden of that hotel, but I don't have to tell you that. You were there. You saw it. Living color. Last night, you saw it. You make up your own moral. Because I'm tired. Mr. Witt Robinson. And that's a wrap. Well, we know that wasn't a fake. But I'm afraid that uh, Jim's feeling for me was. Not according to our friend Margie. Oh, he liked her, all right, but uh, she said that his mind was always on you. He knew I was in town. Why didn't he try to find me? Because DeWitt kept him from it. His biggest concern was for you, Wendy. All he wanted was to take his lumps for the accidental death of the priest, find you, and start over. Are you really sure about that? I just talked to DeWitt. That's why I stopped by here. Thought you'd like to know. Oh, I did want to know that. Thank you, Libby. I guess I can go home now, Mr. Jones. I think I'm going to be all right. I never doubted it for a moment. Aw. Well, wouldn't you know it? I forgot to ask my uh, cab to wait. Well, now, I think I just happen to be going in your direction. 
What direction is that, Jedediah? Uh, south, west, north, <laughs> whatever. Out, 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 you two.